quietly for the, for the salvation of the Lord.
there's been times in our we're going through difficult times and, and the community of God that can shows up and reveals Jesus to me, the body of Christ, through how they help and serve and are involved in our lives. And so we as a community can reveal Jesus to those who are going through the land. Or if, we don't, if we're not able to share what we're going through the difficulties, how can we expect the church or the body of Christ to then enter into our lament if we're not telling people like that a lot? Well, the church didn't do anything for me. Well, did you tell anybody that you're going through that? That, that might be a place to start. So, but we find this in our lament through these two things. Um, so, what we look at, at the text, and we kind of can just walk through it, um, that we can find lament in normal everyday stuff. So verse one, I am one that's seen affliction, right? Just normal afflictions uh, in life. I hurt my leg this week working out, right? So there's an affliction, it's frustrating, right? So that can be a form of lament. Uh, verse two, he has brought me into darkness without any light. So our own sin brings lament. Our own sin. We, we all sin. Probably every day. That we, we put ourselves before God. We worship ourselves over the living God. We, we bring about, through our sin, many of us at the time, we bring consequences in our life because of our sin. And so that can cause lament in our life. Not only through the consequence, right? So you, you know, a simple one is you break the law of speeding, you get pulled over, you get a ticket. And it's frustrating, right? It's a, a lament. But you cause that problem by speeding. And, but then there's also the lament of repenting of the dark of the dark times, repenting of the sin in our life, that we're we're sorry that we walk away from God. Um, exile, you know, the big theme here of meditation is that the Israelite people were in exile and not where they wanted to be. How many times in life are we not where we want to be? Right? We ask my kids all the time. Now that we, we moved yesterday, so now our commute is like 10 feet. But <laughs> previously, our commute was like an hour. And so we're driving here to St. Paul's, and they'd be like, are we there yet? It's like, does it look like we're there? <laughs> when are we going to be there? When we're there, we'll be there. And we do that in life all the time. Are we there yet? Is this thing going to happen? Am I going to get to this or that? Do you have these goals? Or, or I like how it looked the way we, we thought it might look. And so we are, there's a sense that we're in exile. And there's a sense too, scripturally, as we follow Jesus and become more aligned with his kingdom, there's a sense that our life looks differently than the cultural life around us. And so we'll feel a bit different. We'll feel like it doesn't fit. We are in exile. And so we lament that, that we're not where we want to be. Uh, verse 4, he has made my flesh and my skin waste away, right? We're getting old. We're not getting any younger, right? None of us are getting younger. We're all getting older. And what happens when we get older? I'm noticing when I get out of bed in the morning, I need some gummy meat for you to get the joints working, right? When I go to the gym to work out, I actually have to do a warm-up. I can remember my 20s, I didn't have to warm up. I can just go in and do what I did, and it's fine. Now I have to spend an hour warming up just to work out for 10 minutes. And so, <laughs> normal everyday stuff, we, we lament that. Like, you see young kids doing things that you used to be able to do, and you lament that, or you just can't do certain things anymore, and you just, you know, we lament those things. And then... Uh, verse 9 says, He blocked my ways with stones and made my path crooked. I just see that as a burden of life. Like life just happens. Right? And one car is broken down, the next car is broken down. And then, and then our, something happens at the house. And just, just, you know, it rains, it pours, and then just, just the burdens of life, the stresses of life. And so when we're going through these, these average, everyday things that bring us pain, do we lament? Do we. Or do we just ignore it, right? Do we just put it off? Or do we deal with it? Do we go to God with these things? Do we, do we deal with it personally? Do we bring these things to the community? Or do we say, well, I don't want to bother people with my burdens? Or do you have a community you feel like you can, can bring those to? For me personally, I, I like to get away with God to process some of these pains in life. Uh, I, I, take, I take a rhythm where I maybe take an afternoon and just get along with God over the season. I take my journal or Bible and start to to write down the pain of the last season of life and give it to God. Um, I have a friend that I get with probably quarterly and we spend, spend an afternoon together talking.
talking about the things in life and just bringing it up and encouraging each other. You have somebody like that. So that would be a thing. And then, obviously, guys, um, there's big life circumstances, right? There's depression. Verse 11 in the scripture, he says, uh, or verse 10, he is a bear lying away from me. A lion is hiding, right? Bears and lions are huge. My grandfather lived on a top of a mountain in California, and I remember going to visit him, and I, he showed me a paw of a grizzly bear. It was massive. But if I saw that grizzly bear, he would take me down pretty quickly, right? And so, it's a life of bear. Big life circumstances are big, like depression or sickness or loss of a job, these things that are just like monumental in our life, loss of a close loved one. These bring immense pain. These are these bring these can typically debilitate us and, and lead us down like a path that maybe isn't the right path and lead us away from God or we start to question who why God would you do this and those sorts of things happen in these moments. But if you, if you don't have a rhythm of taking these things personally to God lamenting in the everyday life, parts of life, when the big things come, we're probably not going to take that to God. We're probably just going to blame God, or, or we might take it to God for a little season to treat God as a genie in a bottle, right? Like, all right, God, leave me out of this situation. If we, we feel like if we rub God the right way, then we'll get what we want. But God's not genie. And so He wants to build a relationship with us. He wants, he wants us to, to, to be still and know that He is God, knowing Him in the quiet and receive from Him in those moments. Um, you know, this summer, actually, when I was in it, it was probably a week after I interviewed Peter at St. Paul, uh, Kelly and I spent a week at the hospital. Kelly was dealing with some issues, and right over here in New Brunswick, right? That was like a big, dramatic moment for us. One of the things, you know, we had, we've had a few of these over our life, our life together, and I thought we handled it pretty well this time. The previous times, we probably freaked out a little bit more than we should have, but this time we're praying, we're bringing it to God, we're, we're, we're asking God to meet our needs, and then, you know, the community of people around us, you know, reveal God in our lament. We, we let him know, hey, we need help. I, I don't have a change of clothes, can somebody bring me, you know, change of clothes, uh, I've been eating hospital food for days, like in, you know, hotel rooms, things like that. People provided and helped out through that, and we saw who God was through a community around us. And that was a beautiful thing. So how do we find Jesus in our, in our own life? We find it through going in personally and, and allowing the community around us to engage with us. And then others bring pain. Well, this is entirely possible. <laughs> Uh, others bring pain, right? Like people stab us in the back. It says in verse 14 here that, that they were a laughing stock, had become a laughing stock. People taunt, taunt us. And so, you know, a question to ask and others bring pain to our life, like why am I feeling this way? Is it, is it because I fear what they think about me? I'm not I'm not receiving from, from God the encouragement. I'm looking to man and their approval rather than God's approval. There's a lot of a lot of things we can do. You know, but ask, why am I feeling this pain because of what others are doing? And then, and then to the community, be honest. Like, bring it up. Like, if someone's offending you, uh, bring it up in a, in a loving and caring way and deal with it. Deal with, deal with some of that conflict in, in a peaceful way. Um, you know, life will bring these things. But how, and the, and, the, and the nice part about this text is there's a but, right? There's pain in life. We all understand it. We've all been there, but but and the, and the text tells us that the but is here. It makes a shift. But verse twenty-one. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Jesus does not fail us. Jesus will do what He says He's going to do. We're going to sing a song here at the end of our time together. Great is Thy faithfulness. He said here. Jeremiah is saying, your mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. When we are faithless, he is faithful. When we, when we lose our faith, Jesus gives us the faith. That's the beautiful part about this. It's not about us, it's about Jesus. In our deepest darkness, it's Jesus. It's when Jesus shines the brightest in our life. 
The sun is coming up on your pain. The sun is coming up on your lament. Tomorrow is a new day. Your mercies are new every morning. Don't give up. Jesus still didn't give up. Jesus didn't give up when he was in the tomb. He didn't give up on Lazarus when he was in the tomb. He won't give up on you and your despair. The despair and devastation that sent, may set in on us, the divine separates the light from darkness. You see that in Genesis, that he separates the light from darkness. And in Jesus, there is light in our grief. There's nothing that we can do in our grief. Uh, you know, there's really nothing that you can do. I, it is said that time heals all wounds, and there's some truth to that, but I think Jesus is the one who heals all wounds. Jesus is the one that brings healing to our life. And so let's go ahead. He's waiting for you in the, in the darkness of your lament. He's waiting to reveal the light to you. And let the community, let this community be Jesus. Don't try to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Let's be vulnerable with each other. Let's find someone we can share life's pains with and have someone walk through it with us. Um, and here, here is my prayer for St. Paul that we will share in each other's pain. May we be a church that grieves with each other. May we not be afraid to lament. Life is difficult. We all have pain. May we not avoid that pain, but bring it to the light. So that Jesus might heal us. The beautiful part about today is we get to go to the table. It's at the table that we get to give Jesus our pain and our lament. So we're going to go to the communion table this morning and join us at the table.